Have you ever wondered how security researchers find remote code execution vulnerabilities in apps like WhatsApp? In this video, I'll show you how an old heap bug in WhatsApp was originally discovered by the Checkpoint security research team and how we can rediscover the same bug in just a few minutes using Genie AI. We'll break down how these type of vulnerabilities happen why image and video files are such a common attack vector and how tools like AFL++ and Genie AI make bug hunting easier than ever. And make sure you watch the video till the end because I'll show you how you can start hunting bugs, earn bug bounties using our tool and even get an extra bonus just for using a Genie AI to find valid vulnerabilities. Let's get into it. Hi everyone, my name is Umit Aksu, founder of Mobile Hacking Lab Learning Platform where we teach offensive mobile security. If you are interested in learning iOS and Android pen testing and vulnerability research, we offer completely free courses. Check the links in the descriptions below. In my last video, I talked about Genie AI, a tool that we internally at Mobile Hacking Lab use and how it accidentally helped me to find a crazy bug while doing vulnerability research on an Android media player app of a specific vendor. That bug ended up letting me remotely crash and reboot a MacBook totally unexpected. If you haven't seen that video, check the link in the top right or find it in the description below. Now in that video I also mentioned I would go into how the original vulnerability worked. But before we dive into that, I want to show you something else. How fast can we rediscover an older WhatsApp vulnerability that was originally found by the Checkpoint research team? About the WhatsApp vulnerability. So here's the deal. The Checkpoint research team found a heap bug in WhatsApp. It was in a function called apply filter into buffer. If you don't know what heap overflows or heap out of bound read writes are, no stress. We are working on a whole video series explaining all the different types of vulnerabilities in simple terms. So make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of those. If you want to read the original article of Checkpoint Research Team, you can find that also in the links description below. Why image and video bugs matter? Here is something interesting. A lot of Android apps include what we call native dependencies. These are bits of C, C++ code, and when those have bugs, they can lead to serious stuff, like remote code execution. Image and video parsing is especially risky. It's always been a hot target for attackers. Why? Because media files like JPEG or MPEG often include metadata, things like width, height, duration stored in these files headers. And if an attacker tweaks those headers in just the right way, the app reading the file might crash or worse, run code it shouldn't. This isn't just theory. Google Project Zero and real world attacks like the ones from NSO Group have used this exact strategy, exploit media parsing bugs through images, videos, or even video calls, breaking down the WhatsApp bug. Now let's talk about the vulnerable WhatsApp function. Apply filter into buffer takes five arguments. The first two are used by the Java JNI layer. So don't worry, I'll explain JNI in another video. The important ones are the three Android bitmap objects. Source J bitmap, the original image. Fit J bitmap, the filter. And the dest underscore J bitmap, the result after applying the filter. The function calls Android bitmap get info to read info like width, height, and stride, bytes per row, and format. Then it loops over the image data and applies the filter. But the way it loops uses height times four as steps, which is risky, especially if those values are tampered with. So again, the core issue comes back to height and width fields in image metadata. Sounds familiar? It's similar to the bug I found in the Android media player that crashed my MacBook. Fuzzing and discovery. What's really cool is that Checkpoint research team used a fuzzing tool called AFL++ to find the bug. Fuzzing means you send a bunch of messed up inputs to a function or app and watch for the crashes. AFL is one of those tools we often use for this. But here's the catch. Traditional fuzzing takes time. You'll need to build something called a fuzzing harness understand the code base and do quite a bit of reverse engineering. Today I'm going to show you how you can rediscover this exact vulnerability using Genie AI in just a few minutes without writing any fuzzing harness or code. Let's dive in and I'll show you this in action. 
Now I'm here at the Mobile Hacking Lab website. I want to highlight that we have a lot of cool hacking labs that you can do for free. All of them can be downloaded, but if you want to do them using one of our devices, that's also possible. You can just use the devices. If you haven't created an account, you can just do it. And there are free credits that you can do the labs, but you could also download the labs and do them locally without any cost. We have also a bunch of free courses over here, so I highly recommend go watch them. Um, but for now, we're going to focus on Genie AI, and I'm going to demonstrate how we will find the vulnerability that I was discussing about. Now, let's open Genie AI, and you have to be logged in, and I can just press continue. And the cool part about this is that Genie now supports also Windows DLLs. So you can just upload Windows DLLs and also use the auto reverse functionality. But not only Windows DLLs, it also supports like kernel objects. You can see that over here. I'll show that in a minute. You can upload kernel modules and anything else like a binary. But for now, you can even chat. Every one of those has, a, for example, if I press this and send it, for each one of these code flows, there will be a context built for you. So automatically, you can start executing the, the needed reverse engineering or find vulnerabilities. But for now, let's focus now back on the WhatsApp vulnerability that I was telling about. Now, I will just start a new scan for that. So I'll upload new files. And what we can do is in here, I already unpacked it. So the vulnerability is in libwhatsapp.so. So I'll open that and upload this. And one thing that I want to highlight is that if you see this error, you might need to upload it again. So you can just press again and then start the upload. And you can see now that the device is starting, which actually doesn't happen for loose libraries. You can also upload the full library itself. You can also upload the full Android APK. It will unpack it and do it against all the libraries in the project or in the APK file. Uh, but for now, I did it only for a single library and it supports any architecture, it doesn't matter, so you can just use that. So right now, you can just press the stop because there is no device that will be run. In the first instance, you might see that it doesn't look like something is happening. But as we can read over here, Gini is still working on finding function calls. So this might take a little bit of time. In most of these cases, you can just wait a little bit and then see the results coming in in a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds in some cases. So we will wait. And once they will come, you can just press the results and you should see them coming in or not. But like I said, it might take a little bit of time for them to come in. Now, I already did the scan previously, so I can just open one of them over here. As you can see here, I have one. So we can just open it very quickly. As you can see that there are a lot of uh, functions that it found. Uh, we can do, of course, click each one of them. For example, if I would press auto reverse on this, it will start auto reversing all this stuff that's over here. But right now, what we are mostly interested in is the Java native interfaces. As we discussed, the JNI calls. You can see there's a bunch of them, but we were looking at a specific one that was called apply filter into buffer. If I click on that one, you can right away see that it already discovered a vulnerability called potential out of bound read. Uh, there's a lot of things that we do not understand yet over here. But if we look at over here, a potential buffer overflow in the assignment over here. So right now we have not much of an idea what's going on. Once you do your analysis, you can actually mark it down as a vulnerable function so you can come back later to it. For now, I'll press the auto reverse and you can see it changed those based on his understanding. And that actually helps us to understand these are actually bitmaps. Now, it did a lot of stuff, but what, when, once we scroll down below, we can see some interesting stuff. It will explain a lot of things for us and it will say right away that there are some issues over here. For example, there's a buffer overflow risk. Is there any exploitable vulnerabilities present over here? You can start going into chat with it. So I'm just asking right now, are there any exploitable vulnerabilities present? And there will be a few of them and I'll say, okay, let's focus on one, number one over there. Once we focus on number one, it will tell us that there is a problem with the dimensions and strides. So there's a lot of text. I'll keep it short for now. 
And we can sh uh, ask like, uh, but when we look at over here, for example, it says like the loop conditions, the loop that iterates over the pixel data do while loop rely on a condition that's derived from the bitmap dimension, which is exactly the vulnerability that the checkpoint team had found. So if we say like, uh, show us an example of how this could be triggered, we can see simply how we should be able to trigger this vulnerability as well. You can see that there is a easy uh, code that uh, gives you an understanding, but I would like to understand how this really works within the code. So I can just ask like, show me the vulnerability in the code co uh, with comments and this can, how I can trigger this exactly. We can see that uh, this can be done and it shows us that the Excel pix access pixel data happens and the potential out of bound access in the indices exceeds the buffer size, and which is exactly the vulnerability. This is from here till here. And this is exactly the vulnerability that was discovered by the Checkpoint Security Research Team. Their output looks a little bit different than our decompilation. They are using, uh, from what I have seen, X-rays IDA Pro. So in here, you can see clearly that this is the vulnerability. And we can actually ask, like, how can we trigger this bug? Uh, it will explain us like how that there is an out of bound access happening. And what I usually do within Genie, I will just ask like create a, a ASCII flowchart to demonstrate the vulnerability so I can easier understand how this works. As you can see over here, we right away got like the bitmaps and then it will say that there is a checks being happening and then the dimensions. And then you can see the calculations that are happening over here. And then in here, the exact vulnerability that causes the out of bound access. Also another thing that we can do, uh, I will demonstrate that in another video, how to actually use this to create a real proof of concept so that we can trigger an ASAN report. Uh, but that will be introduced in the next videos. So hope you will uh, subscribe to the channel because I'm gonna show you how you can build actually directly uh, a proof of concept application that will trigger the vulnerability directly without fuzzing. So instead of waiting for days for the for some bugs to get triggered we can actually use ai to evaluate the code and then directly write a proof of concept application that triggers the vulnerability as you just have seen genie ai makes discovering vulnerabilities faster and way more accessible we made genie ai available for free and all the llm features are unlocked for now it's completely free so try it out, explore, and find some bugs yourself. If you find bugs that get acknowledged, we'll even give you a bonus, typically between $100 and $200. And of course, if a vendor pays you a bug bounty, that's all yours. Our bonus is just a thank you for showing it was found using Genie AI. In the coming weeks, we'll host workshops and community events to help you get started. And one last thing, over 80% of you watching these videos aren't subscribed yet. Your support means a lot and helps us to keep building free tools and content for the community. So do us a favor, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and drop a comment if you have feature requests or questions. We'd love to hear from you. Let's keep hacking and build together. So what are you waiting for? Go try Genie AI. It's completely free.